I'm gonna make you ride. Starts off there. with you Street Wraith. Pays two life to cycle it. That's a card that we mentioned, forgot to mention also. It gives you, you know, just basically it's a free, free, dig. free dig to get to one of your mana producers. Because remember, it's not you don't need one, you don't need two. You need four mana to play the flyer. Chrome it, locks. Yeah, so in order to uh, get to that Prince point. Prince Cabal Therapy, black mana. And he has it, actually. Simeon Spirit Guide Exiled, so into a mana morphos. This is going to be a turn so, one kill? Well, once the deck starts, yes. I don't want to, this is just. So here's what he... Oh, you know what's funny though? If mana you, count? He has one Narcomy in his hand. If he has two, can he not go off? Uh, it's possible that that's the case. Yeah, I think but would... I think it. Well, it depends on which creature he gets out. If it's the Balustrade Spy, it's the enters the battlefield. Yeah. Right? The other one, the Undercity Informer, has to sacrifice. Well, the thing, the thing I'm saying at the very end, yeah, to, in order to reanimate it. Second yeah, so you, so if you, you have need, two Narcomibas yeah, and the Balustrade Spy. Right. So if you draw three, you can't do okay, it. Okay, so he imprints a Narcomiba to another Chrome Mox. Uh, uses two mana to play Cabal Ritual. It's going to make three black and then a blue. And there you go, the Balustrade Spy. So target me. I have no lands. going to flip my entire library. Yeah, Get three Narcomibas yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see you do it. Yeah, let's go through it. You're on camera. Please, Jeremy, by all means, we would like to see you do this combo for the people at home so that we know how it works, so we so can play this deck in tournaments. Right, so he's asking a shortcut here, which is perfectly okay. Yeah. And he's going through and then pulling out Narcomibus. Then he's going to flashback a Dread Return. Putting into play the Angel of Glory's Rise. Rise from your grave. Then, Do you know what that's a reference to? No, I don't actually. It's a video game. What do you think about that for me? Rise from your grave? Yeah. <laughs> would it would it help if I said Rise from your grave? That's the that's the voice. Uh, one of our one. director Shoebox obviously knows, and he's giving me a high five off to the side. No, You're was, welcome, was this, Shoebox. Was this on uh, a Commodore computer or an Atari? Tweet us sure. with the hashtag SCGMKE if you know what that is a reference to, that video game. Classic video game, one of my favorites. Nope. Okay, so, Stumped. Angel of Glory's Rise, exile all zombies. Return all humans from the graveyard to your battlefield. And I... I I forgot to. <laughs> oh, Andrew again. Andrew. Andrew, actually, we're going to call Andrew it. J. Jeets the mid game handshaker. We're going to call him the mid game handshaker. Cause he loves it. He didn't know. He didn't know. He actually shook uh, his opponent's hand last round twice. And he, I'm pretty sure he knows how Delver works. So I think he, just, he likes to shake hands. So that's it. Yeah, but he didn't know what was going on. He saw the deck list, but he's like, I'm yeah. not sure how you win. So let's just see it. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, I have nothing against sportsmanship at any point. No. And nothing at all. He so. was genuinely excited to see that, as was I, and I hope you were. Okay, yeah, and I'm actually going to change my trivia question. I have a oh. question for you for six months of free premium, okay? And the reason why is because kind of as a going away gift to a friend that we've mentioned earlier, okay. I want to ask you a question about this oops spells deck that we have Oops, in front all of us. spells Oops, all spells deck that we have in front of us here actually the, there's an exclamation point written here so, so I guess it's oops. oops all spells all spells so who wrote an article recently about this deck has championed this deck like he champions all other silly decks that shouldn't be played outside of your kitchen table and he's a good friend of mine he has worked for Star City now he's at Wizards of the Coast so who is the inventor of this deck, or at least the champion of this deck, wrote an article about it for Star City Games, and now works for Wizards of the Coast there in Seattle. Go ahead and tweet us at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Premium, with the correct answer, and then we'll choose one at random, completely no random. Need rush, no need to rush, do your take research, your time. go read the article, it's a fantastic article. Yep. Uh, and champion, I believe, is the correct term. Yeah, he didn't As following the conversation on Twitter, it seems like they were indicating that someone else was the one who came up with yeah, it. Yeah, like I said, I played I didn't, this I didn't months the... and months and months ago, so it's not something that's uh, something that's just completely brand new. But he's a champion this of it. The gentleman who wrote about it on yeah, Star City yeah, yeah. Games. Who is it? Go ahead and tweet us. So, and uh, we'll give you some nice six months of good old reading. So. Mm. And you can find out about more innovative decks. Oh, like and this, while perhaps. you're there, actually, let me check a time check real quick. In about three minutes, 
My article will be up. Mm, no, I believe an Eastern hour, time. Eastern hour time. and three minutes. Is it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Wait I for can't. it. Wait for it. You're right. Okay. <laughs> so, so an hour and three minutes. Check your clocks. Make so sure if it's you right. missed it at the end, read then Jeremy Barbo's win condition once again was Angel of Glory's Rise, getting back all humans, then activating a zombie Lady of Scrolls, tapping an untapped wizard to draw a card. His library was empty, so he cannot draw a card, so normally he would lose, but he also had Laboratory Maniac, so instead, instead of losing the game, you win the game. That's a pretty nice uh, alternative uh, reality there. Not able to draw <laughs> cards, win the game. It's a and fun. I, yeah, go ahead. It's just a fun card. I think it's a it had a good flavor. I think right when people saw it, it had combo written on it. If you're gonna play it anyway, it's definitely not one of the worst cards of all time. It has some general purpose here. We're seeing it right now. So. So now let's talk about how these two graveyard decks are going to possibly interact with each other. Oh my goodness! Look at Jeremy Barbo's sideboard. He has four Goblin Char Belchers, Grim Monolith, four Lion's Eye Diamond, three Tinder Wall three spoils of the vault, he can transform into a goblin charbelcher deck. <laughs> isn't that isn't that interesting? It is interesting. He is uh, playing most of the mana producers, all the free lands and the chrome mocks and he only needs is some lines on diamonds and ready to go nuts. So basically he goes from being graveyard based to being belcher based. Here's the kicker. That is an awful plan when your opponent sees your sideboard. <laughs> yeah, but also, Andrew J. Jeets does not have any graveyard hate here, yeah, right? Yeah, so he's not going to even need it. He's got the three ley line of sanctity, so but he's no not ley line of the void. So he's not going to change it at no. all. There's no reason to. How does a zombie read? Does a zombie say tap or untap wizard? Each play, or you draw a card, right? You draw a card. You draw a card. Yeah. Okay. You can't target your opponent in okay. any kind of way. All right, so he's got Iona, which is pretty good against his deck, right? You just name Black and he can't win, I think. That's where Belcher would uh, come into play. So Andrew uh, JG says gets Iona out. But see how it's, you're not going to get that out to turn three anyway, it's on Dredge or Average. So by the time that's even relevant, Jeremy's already oopsed by then, right? Yeah, oh, but you can't even... Oops. It would be hard to get Belcher out without the Black Rituals. No, I'm saying... Iona resolved by Andrew is pretty much lights out for Jeremy either way. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah, so that's a pretty good strategy there. But then again, it's going to be tough to do. What do you think about Nature's Claim as an LB spell against Chrome Boxes? Well, they're going to get the men off at the, the turn you they go You can have the off. imprint uh, on the stack and then nail it. Oh, good point. Good so, point. Imprint is a triggered ability. Yeah, I don't know if that's good enough, though, to, to bring a Nature's Claim. Better than, is it better than nothing? It might be better than nothing. Because currently Andrew has nothing. I mean, he can try to combo faster, but it, we saw that Jeremy won on turn one with an ideal hand. <clears throat> yeah. I so. think you have to have something to try to interact, and that's not a bad one. We'll see if Andrew J. Jeets has come up with that solution, but he, all he saw was that one game, presumably. does not has not seen this deck in action very much. So, um, no one really has... This is the first time I think I've seen it in the top eight. I uh, definitely haven't seen this deck tearing up the open series or anything else, really. But it's cool to see, though. So here's the benefit to playing an under-the-radar deck. People don't know how to beat you. I think the Nature's Claim and the Chrome Mox in response to the uh, imprint is a good play. But... Uh, it might not be good Might enough. not realize it. Yeah, well... Maybe does, maybe doesn't. Definitely, definitely not the ideal situation to deal with yeah. Chromox. See Andrew smiling there, some laughter. I think they're saying that hand's just not good enough. How your your oops all spells deck is so fast. A dredge usually takes two to three turns to get set up, ideally. Yeah, yeah. So we can pretty much hear them from over here, so we can uh, determine what their thought process is here. He's thinking, brewing, trying to figure out what to do. I don't know. I think you can't keep a weak hand against his deck, so he'll just die, as you've seen, turn one. It's not so good. All right, so several people knew the reference that you did not. The first one was Soli at Sol underscore T1 underscore MTG. 
The video game I referenced with Rise from Your Grave yeah. was Altered Beast. I've never actually heard of that. I saw it over there. I've never heard of it. This is a, it's a fantastic game where you start off as a human, and as you get power-ups, you turn into a werewolf. Uh, and in the later levels, you turn into a were-bear or a were-tiger. Is this on what system is this Or on? a dragon. Uh, it was originally an arcade game, and then it was ported to Sega Genesis. Hmm. You ever remember the Sega CD? Remember that? that they tried to take off. That was terrible. Yeah, it was. Okay, actually, Andrew's going to mulligan here. I thought we are close to deteriorating like Chapin and I into a Mortal Kombat discussion. I'm glad that wasn't the case. Or Street Fighter, if we want to segue into that. I could talk about Street Fighter. I actually played the original Street Fighter, just one, or Street Fighter. Street Fighter, in the arcade. yeah. Me too. Instead of the six buttons, you know, the three for the punch, three for the kick, it had two buttons, one for punch, one for, for kick. Uh, mm -hmm. And the strength of your punch and kick was determined by how hard you hit the buttons. It was like, <laughs> instead of a button, it was like a big right, punching yeah, yeah, yeah. bag type thing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that was back in the time, I think, of the Ninja Turtles game in the arcade, too. I remember Ninja, seeing Ninja Turtles. Yeah. That was one of my favorites. That was one of my well. favorites, too, yeah. These are great games. The original one. The Simpsons game, very similar. The Simpsons, oh yeah, he hit people with skateboard and stuff. That game's great. And the, the secret, the team up, if you have two or more players, you stand next to each other and don't do anything for a you while. You jump on their shoulders. And then do the super moves. Yeah, yeah those are great, yeah. Uh, memory lane. You guys have no idea what we're talking about, probably. So, all right, so we're going to have turn one, ping myself, Ancestral Recall Land. And uh, as Gwen pointed out earlier, who draws three cards with this card? They just bring back three things from the graveyard, so... Encephalid Coliseum. Okay, so Andrew taps the Cephalid Coliseum, takes one damage, and casts Breakthrough. He's going to draw four, and then keep all, all but X, but X is zero, so his whole hand goes to the graveyard. And let's see what it is. Uh, there's a Faithless Looting, Gemstone Mine, Cabal Therapy, Careful Study, Dread Return, uh, City of Brass, and a Bridge from Below, another City of Brass. So... No dredger, is that correct? On the mulligan, Andrew has kept a hand here that uh, gets his hand in the Matthew graveyard, McCauley but doesn't do that, anything. Matthew McCauley mentioned that Elish Norn is actually another great card against this deck because it would kill all those creatures as a state-based effect before the milling would actually work with Laboratory Maniac. So that's something important to, to note also. I think... Uh, Iona is still better because it prevents you from ever doing that and it prevents you from actually getting the mana for Charbelcher as well if you were to go that route. But why not have both, you know? No one of them, so. Jerry Barbo casts a taxing probe, looks at Andrew's empty hand, and he's, it seems like he's going for it here. Chrome Mox imprint. If he has it, his opponent is dead again. That's, he has the mana, I see it. He has a wild cantor in his hand. Imprint Ooh, which what? means that uh, you have to wait a turn to get a mana from Wild Cantor, though. It's sacked to get a red or green, right? Yes. Pretty sure. So, doesn't really uh, mention Maybe anything. one of uh, sacked to get any color, maybe? Yeah, I think it's any color. Alright, so Elvis Visionary Could be red, green. plus another uh, another one of those is enough. He, yeah, he's got Petal, too. He's got, he's got plenty of mana. If he has the creature in his hand, then he's going to win right here. He's still deciding what to imprint on Chromox. Not a wild cantor. Unless with Elder Spirit Guide, which also would have made a mana. He, I think he has tons of mana in his hand. I don't think he has a wild cantor. He, do, he doesn't have the, okay. the, the creature, I don't think. Bonus pedal, so he's setting up to be able to do it next turn. He should play it. Yeah, you definitely play out all your spells like that, that you can. Because Andrew's deck has Cabal Therapy, therapy, therapy yeah. yeah. Ooh, look at... Uh, okay, I gotta mention this. Jay Ski on Twitter, at JW Ski, says, How about the Michael Jackson arcade game that was out around the same time? I remember that, too. Yeah. yeah. So that was the one where you do the moonwalk. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> you dance with your opponents to kill them. That was the point of the game. All right, so... My favorite was the thriller level with the zombies. <laughs> I do remember that actually. <laughs> How'd that go again? How does that sound? It, it takes me a while to build back <laughs> up to it. <laughs> All right. My voice is naturally much deeper, so let me get some water here. Yeah, let's 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 uh, hydrate real quick. It's got electrolytes in mine, so. Um, so yeah, the Michael Jackson game. You start dancing with your opponents, and then he goes. <laughs> Uh, and now 
now someone's going to record that and make a soundboard out of me. There you go. So that'll be good. So this game not going according to anyone's plan. No, this the is two what, graveyard this tanks. Is what I, when I played against it the first or the only time, this is what they did to me. And that's why the game lasts a while. When you don't have the actual win condition in your hand, you're sitting around with a bunch of really <laughs> silly cards. <laughs> Wild Cantor attacking for one. Yeah, he actually could have played uh, the Elvis Visionary. And uh, not uh, the spirit guide. spirit guide and have that as a 2 2. A two, two yeah. Or Narcomiva as a 1 1 flyer. Creating quite the uh, ragtag army, if you will. How much does Angel's Glory's Rise cost seven. To, to hard cast? Seven mana. That's a lot. He, That's also, too much. he also has. I think he's got Wisp Mare in his hand. Who does? Andrew? I think, so. I think Jeremy has one. Does he have Whisper? He doesn't have any board. What's he holding in his hand? What's he? It's definitely not Whisper. Uh, Andrew has two Whisper. Yeah, it wasn't board. Andrew's hand. Look, look, look at Jeremy's hand. There's some card. What's that card in there? The I white one? Yeah. That's the angel. Oh, that is the angel. Okay, yeah, okay. I couldn't see it. Really. Like let's, keep, let's make sure we keep it down because Andrew, as we said, does have Cabal Therapy. We do not want to give anything away from the booth. Yeah. Very critical here now. Actually, a hard cast Narcomy facing off against a wild cantor. I think he has Dark Ritual in his hand. I think actually you cast the, the angel. And then with one more mana. One, two, three, four, five. He, he has can six make mana with Dark Ritual. Five mana. He can make six. He can tap uh, the Lotus Bell. He doesn't have double white though. So Andrew continuing to ping himself with the Cephalid Coliseum. Is he going to cast another Narcomiva? Has he just drawn back-to-back -back Narcomivas? He has. This is just a... I don't think I would cast that. Near, only because the Jemson Cavernella is one counter on it. Mm. So now, if you need to use that back-to-back, -back, you're not going to be able to. Well, yeah, he needs is to get a... City of oh, so he, f he found it? He has Undercity Informant. Okay. But he has the Angel in his hand? Or the... Is that... He can therapy himself. Does he have a I therapy in his hand? Well, when he plays the informer, he's going to flip his deck, so he'll have a therapy in his graveyard. Could yeah, he should be able to go off from here. He's going to yeah. ritual first. Chrome Mox. And he's going to play the informer. He's going to sacrifice his wild cantor to two, three. this creature. Oh, he said that's why he laughed. Uh, apparently, Jeremy uh, Drew the Informer said, "Quote: Now you're dead." So, very respectable. There's a card actually while he's going over this that I use when I play in cube. So he sacks the Informer, flips his, flips, flips his library. Okay, he's gonna flip it. I throw it at my opponent and say, "You're dead!" Really loud. The top of the gut one. Like, you're dead. And that's uh, his Sugu's second right. Because it's a very Shade exciting card. Second right. Throw at your opponent. Deal 10 damage to target player if they are at 10 life. It's a fantastic card. Yeah. If you don't have it in your cube, you're making a mistake. Just letting you know. Alright, so uh, he says, Jeremy says you're dead. And now he's going to make his opponent dead. He's going to go through yeah, his promise. Therapy himself to put the angel in his graveyard. And then sack the three Narcomibas to flashback Dread Return. And... Get back the angel, which will... Oh, we didn't get to see the angel exile any zombies. I'm very disappointed. Nope. Alright, here. Look who we're doing stuff Humans. over here. Humans. I can't believe the wild cantor is a human. I want to. It look, looks so wild. It's just a human that's kind of like... It's kind of like Jungle Book stuff. So. Yeah, feral. Kind of like just left in the wilderness and then raised by Raised animals. by cantors. Whatever yeah. a cantor is. It's, I think they're just forest people. I'm not a, I'm not a big uh, uh, lore man, so I'm not quite sure. Angel of Glory's Rise. Love this. Love this. Uh, and love. Look at that handshake. Two hands. Two hands. Says thank you for having such a it's almost, fun, fun deck. It's, this is the city of brotherly love, isn't it? Just Philadelphia. Philadelphia. No, we are uh, in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. I'm sorry. Mi 